بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I would like to thank Professor Hassan Al Maghrabi and uh, the EFRI organizing committee team for inviting me to this well reputed meeting. I have no declaration. The cause of PID is the ascension of the organism up the genital tract. It is a fairly common disease in a critical age for females caused mainly by sexually transmitted organisms. PID can affect fertility in one in eight of the infected patients. The problem that it is often a silent invader and this is why it is not possible to have accurate data about the real prevalence of the disease in the UK. With a simple multiplication, we can see that it is very costly even at national level. The ascending organism causes inflammation and infection damaging the female genital organs. Chlamydia trachomatis is the most common organism. Various anaerobes can also be found. One of the most difficult organisms to treat is Mycoplasma genitalium. What creates the dilemma is that the pathogen negative PID is common. Gonorrhea is not common organism in the UK and sexually transmitted organisms are less common cause for PID in older women. The coil risk of causing PID is only four to six weeks after insertion. The PID diagnosis dilemma starts from mainly non, its non-specific symptoms like pain, discharge, dyspareunia, dysmenorrhea, various types of abnormal vaginal bleeding, feeling feverish, dysuria, and frequency. Signs are also non-specific like tenderness lower abdomen, VE might query tender pelvic mass, uterine tenderness, positive cervical excitation, and fever over 38 degrees centigrade in moderate and severe cases. On suspicion, we should start empirical antibiotics after exclusion of pregnancy and other clinical causes. Young ladies with new sexual partners are at high risk. Lower abdominal pain and tenderness are important clinical findings helping the diagnosis. Although immunosuppressed patients show more severe symptoms, we do not need to treat them differently. If we discover the famous Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome during diagnostic laparoscopy for any other reasons, and we do not have the resources, skills, or patient consent to perform liver adhesolysis, there is no sufficient evidence to justify organizing another invasive procedure to do so. For suspected tubo ovarian abscess, pelvic and abdominal imaging should be organized and patient should be hospitalized to start parenteral antibiotics, monitoring and possibly invasive procedures. We still have little evidence about the elusive coil. It might be left in situ for 48 to 72 hours with close patient monitoring. Proper sexual history needs to be taken in order to be able to give appropriate contraceptive advice. History and examination are fairly non-specific and need to be backed up by appropriate investigations like microbiology. Even if swabs are negative, pathogen negative PID should still be suspected. Special antibiotics are needed for mycoplasma genitalium. Inflammatory markers are only elevated in moderate and severe cases. The absence of pus cells is good indicator negating the absence of the disease. However, their, their presence has a poor positive predictive value. Pelvic ultrasound will be helpful only in the presence of pelvic masses or collection. 
Doppler ultrasound is non-specific and can only show increased vascularity, which is not uncommon with other conditions like endometriosis. More advanced imaging might be helpful in specific cases. MRI is the preferred imaging modality if available, especially in young ladies. Pregnancy tests should be performed during reproductive age to exclude pregnancy. Multidisciplinary approach with surgical review might be indicated as acute appendicitis can present with similar symptoms. In conjunction with accurate general history, a good menstrual history taking might help differentiate between PID and endometriosis. Same principle applies by accurate history taking, uh, which might help also in identifying ovarian accidents. Again, proper urinary history might help direct our thinking. Chronic and acute bowel problems and functional pain usually have long-standing symptoms. The low threshold to start empirical broad-spectrum antibiotics management is recommended. The PEACH study and more recent evidence provide good support to the beneficial effect of the early start of cefoxetine followed by doxycycline in lowering the rates of post-infection infertility and ectopic pregnancy. In order to be able to tailor a safe plan for such an elusive disease, a multidisciplinary approach with the local microbiology and public health departments, each unit should have a local antimicrobial sensitivity pattern and a local epidemiology of the unit catchment area public infection. The gynecology team should be aware of the financial capacity of the unit and the economic impact of PID on the unit community and country. Patients should be appropriately counseled to be able to make an informed choice of her management options. Proper assessment of the PID severity must be made. PID might be caused by different organisms in different age groups. Updated evidence-based multidisciplinary unit protocols should be in place. Rest and analgesia are essential, especially in severe disease. Parenteral therapy is recommended in severe PID. Good patient and partner information plays an important role in the preventing recurrence. Various treatment risks should be explained clearly. The risk on future fertility with mild, moderate, severe and recurrent disease as an important sequelae of PID should be explained. The benefits of early management start, use of various contraception and screening of sexual partner should be emphasized. In mild to moderate cases, hospitalization is not indicated. Hospital admission for intravenous therapy, observation, further investigations and or invasive management should be considered to exclude surgical emergency if deterioration of the clinical condition despite starting on antibiotic protocol occurs, from the very beginning in the presence of clinically severe PID, querying tubo ovarian abscess on examination, if the patient is intolerant or non-compliant to oral therapy, or if the patient is Pregnant. Pregnancy test is essential for women in reproductive age. 
all recommended antibiotic protocols are of similar efficacy. Hence, allergy to a specific antibiotic is not a problem. PID is not very common in pregnancy. However, it can cause significant maternal and fetal morbidity for the affected woman and her baby. Hence, hospitalization and early parenteral therapy is indicated. Empirical antibiotic therapy against the most common organism in your area should be started and continued for two weeks. The benefits of early start of antibiotic regime is likely to outweigh the risks in pregnancy. Pelvic abscess only without adnexal masses can be drained equally effectively laparoscopically or ultrasound guided. If you do not have Professor Mabrook's laparoscopic skills, then there is no shame in doing a midline laparotomy, although visibility and access of the upper abdomen is better laparoscopically. Patient with moderate or severe symptoms not hospitalized should be followed up after 72 hours of starting treatment. Lack of improvement at any point of follow-up should prompt escalation to the next step of the management protocol. Mild cases can be followed up two to four weeks after starting treatment. This is to check for adequate response and compliance to treatment as well as screening and treatment of partner. It is also important to confirm patient awareness of her condition and repeat pregnancy test if needed. If gonorrhea is confirmed, repeat microbiology in two to four weeks. For Chlamydia trachomatis, the recommended follow-up is after three to five weeks. For Mycoplasma genitalium, it is a bit special. The recommended antibiotic is moxifloxacin, and the expert opinion for follow-up testing is four weeks. Tracing, screening, and if needed treatment of the male partner is essential. National guidelines are available from the British Association of Sexual Health and HIV for various treatment regimes. Also, sexual intercourse should be avoided during the whole period of treatment for both partners. Some ideas for your unit audits. 90% of patients should receive treatment as per unit protocol. 90% of the patient should be tested for mycoplasma genitalium. And 60% of the patient should be followed up within four weeks. Some possible research ideas. The efficacy of metronidazole in mild to moderate PID management regimes. Also, we can think about development of better diagnostic ideas and tests. The efficacy of a single dose versus multiple doses of keftriaxone in the treatment regimes. Please be wary that in PID, one size does not fit all. Management should be tailored based on each individual patient and their partner circumstances as well as the available local unit resources. And these are my references and thank you.